may we never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. For the word of the cross is the power of God to us who have been saved. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raised the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who chose to manifest the blessed hope of your eternal kingdom by the toil of Saint, Saints John the Brabuff, Isaac Yogues, and their companions, and by the shedding of their blood, graciously grant that through their intercession the faith of Christians may be strengthened day by day. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, through one man sin entered the world, and through sin, death, and thus death came to all men, and as much as all sin. If by that one person's transgression the many die, how much more did the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for the many. For if, by the transgression of the one, death came to reign through that one, how much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of justification come to reign in life through the one Jesus Christ? In conclusion, just as through one transgression, condemnation came upon all, so, through one righteous act, acquittal and life came to all. For just as through the disobedience of one man, the many were made sinners, so through the obedience of the one, the many will be made righteous. Where sin increased, grace overflowed all the more, so that as sin reigned in death, grace also might reign through justification, for eternal life, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Sacrifice or oblation you wished not, but ears open to obedience you gave me. Burnt offerings or sin offerings you sought not. Then said I, Behold, I come. In the written scroll it is prescribed for me. To do your will, O oh my God, is my delight, and your law is within my heart. I announced your justice in the vast assembly. I did not restrain my lips, as you, O Lord, know. May all who seek you exalt and be glad in you, and may those who love your salvation say ever, the Lord be glorified. The Lord be with you. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, Gird your loins and light your lamps, and be like servants who await their master's return from a wedding, ready to open immediately when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds vigilant on his arrival. Amen, I say to you, he will gird himself, have them recline at table, and proceed to wait on them. And should he come in the second or third watch and find them prepared in this way, blessed are those servants. The Gospel of the Lord. I think going on a journey or you know preparing for a travel is something that's very good for us because it, it forces us to truly think carefully and check carefully to make sure that we are bringing the right things whenever we go on a travel because we don't want to kind of get up many miles up in the sky ready or many miles away from our home to realize that we brought the wrong pair of shoes or the wrong pair of pants that would not have been fitting for the goal or the journey or the destination that our travel is bringing us into. And so the preparation is, is whenever we go on a travel, the preparation is as important as the journey itself because it truly helps us to make sure that we are ready, fully ready and prepared to have everything that we need that we will be able to use in our destination. And it's that same idea too that we see or we hear in our gospel today when our Lord Jesus said, gird your loins and light your lamps. This command of gird your loins, this is something that we don't anymore hear as much in this modern world, but this is something that we've kind of see, uh, seen spread out all throughout uh, the Old and the New Testament. In fact, we first hear about this command in a journey, a journey that happened in the book of Exodus, when the Israelites were uh, told to prepare themselves in order to leave Egypt. As they were preparing to eat the Passover meal, they, they were told by God to gird your loins, to be prepared so that at a moment's notice, when a sign is given to you, you are to immediately leave this place, go on a journey, and you know, exit and leave Israel to go to the promised land that the Lord has prepared for you. In that particular instance, gird your loin is to prepare yourselves to enter into a journey. In our gospel today, what it actually is calling us into is not anymore to prepare to go out into a journey, but rather to prepare to receive the master who's coming back to us in this journey. It is still an exodus because, you know, when, because it is said that when the master comes back, when, when Jesus comes back, he will bring us into a new exodus, not anymore from Egypt, but from spiritual sin and slavery. And therefore we need to always be prepared to receive our master. We always need to be prepared to encounter him when he comes. Because I think one of the things that the Lord does not, does not uh, or the Lord detests is that of complacency, being complacent in our spiritual lives. And when he comes at a moment's notice and see us complacent, then we know that we will not be prepared for that exodus that he prepares for us. And I think we have some good example or uh, some good um, practices with this. Because every day when we come to Mass, we come to prepare ourselves to receive our Lord in communion. And therefore, when we come to him, I think the question that comes to our mind is, are we prepared? Are we ready to receive him in communion? And I think that's a good example for us for this truly final return of our Lord to meet us here and to bring us into that final exodus into heaven. And so today our gospel reminds us to always be prepared and to always examine ourselves so that we will not have any ounce of complacency in our lives, but to be fully prepared to gird our loins and to light our lamps for the Lord to find us when he comes again. As brothers and sisters in Christ, we join voices in prayer to present these petitions to the Father. That all our shepherds may be guided by the Lord to remain strong in their vocation and in service to the household of God, we pray to the Lord. That those in leadership may be blessed with purity of heart and mind, we pray to the Lord. 
that our patroness, St. Genevieve of Paris, will deliver our community from the devastation caused by this COVID-19 pandemic and intercede for those who are suffering in any way. We pray to the Lord. That through the intercession of Our Lady of Brom Sucker, we will be spared any more loss of life and property during this hurricane season. We pray to the Lord. And in silence, let us offer our own intentions. We pray to the Lord. Merciful God, we offer these prayers in gratitude and hope on behalf of your children, through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we venerate the passion of your martyrs, grant that through this sacrifice, O Lord, we may proclaim worthily the death of your only begotten Son, who, not content with encouraging the martyrs by word, Strengthen them likewise by example, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you are glorified when your saints are praised, their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy you give ardor to their faith. To their endurance you grant firm resolve. And in their struggle the victory is yours, through Christ our Lord. Therefore all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration. And we with all the host of angels cry out and without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Shelton our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, to the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, thus we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the fate of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. To those joining us from social media, please pray with me an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Having fed upon heavenly delights, we humbly ask you, O Lord, that by the blessed example of John, Isaac, and companions, we may bear in our hearts the marks of your son's charity and suffering, and ever enjoy the fruit of perpetual peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. We will now begin our devotion to our mother of perpetual help. Most holy and immaculate virgin and our mother Mary, you are our perpetual help, our refuge and our hope. We come to you today. We thank God for all the graces received through your intercession. Mother of perpetual help, we promise to love you always and to do all we can to lead others to you. Mother of perpetual help, Confident of your powerful influence with God, obtain for us these graces, the strength to overcome temptation, perfect love for Jesus Christ and a holy death, so that we will live with you and your Son for all eternity. Let us pray to be open to God's Word. Mother of perpetual help, you continually sought the meaning of God's words and actions in your life. As we listen to God's Word, may the Holy Spirit enlighten our understanding and give us the courage to put his word into practice in our daily lives. Let us kneel to pray as a community of faith. Mary, all generations have called you blessed, and the Almighty has done great things for you. Mother of perpetual help, we call upon your most powerful name. Your very name inspires confidence and hope. May it always be on our lips, especially in time of temptation and at the hour of our death. Blessed Lady, help us whenever we call on you. Let us not be content with merely pronouncing your name. May our daily lives proclaim that you are our mother and our perpetual help. Let us pray for our temporal wants. Mother of perpetual help, with the greatest confidence we kneel before you. We implore your help in the problems of our daily lives. Trials and sorrows often depress us. Misfortunes and privations bring misery into our lives. Everywhere we meet the cross. Comforter the afflicted, beg your son Jesus to strengthen us as we bear our burdens and to free us from our sufferings. Or if it be the will of God that we should suffer still longer, help us endure all with love and patience. May we follow the example of your son and through him, with him and in him, commend ourselves to the care of our heavenly father. Let us stand now to present our petitions and our thanks. Lord Jesus Christ, at a word from Mary, your mother, you change water into wine at Cana of Galilee. Listen now to the people of God, gathered here to honor our mother, perpetual help. Grant our petitions and accept our sincere thanks. Grant wisdom and guidance to our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop Shelton, our priests, and all the leaders of our nation, state, and community. Grant peace and unity throughout the world, especially in our homes and families. Grant that young people respond generously to the call of the Holy Spirit in deepening their faith and choosing their vocation in life. Grant us continued health of mind and body and help the sick to regain their health according to your holy will. Grant eternal rest to all our deceased and to the souls of all the faithful departed. Let us pause now to silently present our own petitions to our mother of perpetual help. Lord, accept our thanks for the new life of grace you gave us. Accept our thanks for all the graces received through the sacramental life of the church. Accept our thanks for the spiritual and material blessings we have received. Let us pause now to silently thank our mother perpetual help for our own favors received. Please kneel as we pray for the sick. Lord, look upon your servants laboring under bodily weakness, 
cherish and revive the souls which you have created, so that purified by their sufferings, they may soon find themselves healed by your mercy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. May the Lord Jesus Christ be with you that he may defend you, within you that he may sustain you, before you that he may lead you, behind you that he may protect you, above you that he may bless you, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us renew our confidence in Mary as a perpetual help. Mother of perpetual help, you have been blessed and favored by God. You became not only the mother of the Redeemer, but the mother of the redeemed as well. We come to you today as your loving children. Watch over us and take care of us. As you held the child Jesus in your loving arms, so take us in your arms. Be a mother ready at every moment to help us. For God, who is mighty, has done great things for you, and his mercy is from age to age on those who love him. Our greatest fear is that in time of temptation, we may fail to call out to you and become lost children. Intercede for us, dear Mother, in obtaining pardon for our sins, love for Jesus, final perseverance, and grace always to call upon you, Mother of Perpetual Hell. Let us stand now and unite with the Christians of all ages in praising Mary and in committing ourselves to our powerful protection. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, who gave us your mother Mary, whose image we venerate, as a mother ready at every moment to help us, grant we beg you that we who call on her help may always enjoy the fruit of your redemption. This we ask through you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Prayer to Saint Michael. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. Rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, power of God, cast into hell, Satan, in all the evil spirits, prowl about the world, seeking the moon and souls. Amen. Immaculate Mary, your praises we sing, who reigns now with Christ our Redeemer and King. Oh. 